Wexler. How you doing, Zachary? Good. Perfect. I'll give this to you. Have fun, all right? Okay. Hi, I'm Zachary Hessler, an eighth grader from Gifford Middle School in Florida. But I didn't always live in Florida. I was born in Colorado where it's nice and dry. So when we moved down, we installed a dehumidifier to cope with the humidity. But I play the cello, so practicing with that constantly joining in the background was a real challenge. I tried all kinds of things to quiet it down, but nothing worked. There had to be a better solution to noise pollution. We all live here. It seems quiet from this perspective, but we actually live down here, where it's crowded, busy, and noisy. Our world is getting bigger and smaller as technology and population continue to grow. We're more connected than ever before, but the commensurate level of noise has risen to an unsustainable rate, threatening communication, public health, and private comfort. The World Health Organization recommends 30 to 35 decibels of noise in a normal environment, yet most far exceed that. In fact, a recent, poll st a recent study showed that in most government and recreational areas, noise level and privacy is the number one complaint and concern. Governments and companies spend millions of dollars trying to combat this issue, and there are currently three scalable solutions on the market. The first is that of passive noise suppression panels. They're bulky, indiscriminate, and often aesthetically unpleasing. The second is that of noise-canceling headphones. Although these utilize active noise cancellation, they must be worn and are often impractical in normal open-air settings. Now, the third is that of broadcast open-air active noise cancellation. Certain companies are focused on establishing almost zones of silence by projecting inverse waves in a limited scope. While promising, this idea does not account for what we do every day as people, move around. This led me on a two-year research and development journey to invent Silence. Silence stands for self-contained interactive LiDAR emitting noise canceling engine and works through the marriage of two technologies, active noise cancellation and LiDAR technology. Active noise cancellation works by finding and broadcasting the inverse of a wave being sent to the user's stereo cilia and merging that wave with the original one to cancel out the noise. However, we're always moving in and out of phase, which is where LiDAR comes in. LiDAR, or light detection and ranging, is an optical technology that works by using, that's often found in autonomous vehicles that uses laser data to map distances and environments in 3D. LiDAR solves the problem of continuously detecting the dimensions of the acoustical space, as well as continuously detecting the real-time positional and movement information of the listener in that space at near the speed of light, much faster than Wi-Fi or GPS. Now, the final component of silence is the software DSP written in Python that uses known characteristics of the waveform, like period and amplitude, in conjunction with LiDAR positional data to determine precise audio offsets to keep waves in phase. The prototype included a Garmin LiDAR unit, an Arduino processor, spectral analyzer, oscilloscope, numerous Python libraries, and numerous 3M products, such as 3M sound panels, spray adhesives, command strips, and a 3M Peltor headset. Let's take a look. So in the prototype, I chose, three fre I chose three frequencies to test, that of 400 hertz, 80 hertz, and 1000 hertz. They were then broadcast in turn from the left speaker as the offending tone. As well, and then the LiDAR unit gauged the distance of the acoustical space as well as the distance of the listener from the offending tone. This information was then fed back into the algorithm through DSP. Now, the algorithm took, re, took known information on the waveform as well as LiDAR data to generate a precise phase offset. This inverse phase adjusted wave was then played, played out of the right speaker and changes of suppression were measured from the listener's position using a spectral analyzer. I repeated my trials over 1,800 times and concluded that while you can't cancel an entire room by adding noise or energy, you can target specific frequencies or areas to reduce decibel levels through using silence. So the next steps to improve, the, to improve this silence further would be to improve the accuracy of peripherals such as, such as the LiDAR or the microphone and to have faster on-chip DSP instead of going through a program such as Python and externally sourcing it to have everything done on-chip to free for pa faster presentation. And then I would also focus on accommodating for complex frequencies, occlusion, reflection, and the, uh, and the recommendation of multiple listeners. Once fully developed, silence can be applied in hospitals, schools, factories, offices, and even automobiles for a fraction of the cost of usual passive noise suppression systems. It could leverage existing sound systems as well as inexpensively install installable ones. 
I'd like to thank Mr. M. Slander, Dr. Fackler, 3M, and Discovery Education for all of their help on, on learning a science applied to life. And so hopefully with an improved system, I could hopefully see and save our silence. That was a wonderful presentation. I really loved it. Um, so can you tell me a bit more about your process of coming up with your, or your, first of all, like your inspiration and then coming oh, up yes. with your idea? So originally I was really interested, like from a young age, at physics and the physics and science of waves. I did research in like fourth grade and fifth grade in projects on electromagnetic waves and how those interact with each other. But then I began to realize that I might be more interested in mechanical waves, which influence and affect with the medium they're traveling in. So originally I was trying, I was almost obsessed with this idea of creating, of manipulating it, like in a hologram, like manipulating matter through waves. But then I got into the projection of waves and the physics of an actual mathematical principle behind the wave. So that just kind of evolved into a hopefully scalable product. Thanks very much, Zach. I just want to make sure that I understand, and I apologize, but so these would be like speakers that would be kind of up in the room? Yes, this would be a system. This would be a system that could be installed and could use a specific information or an array of different, of different silence units, which would be able to record sound in the room and kind of use a distance mapping through different data points to discover the real-time acoustical environment of the room and use, different, and use different positions of the LIDAR being shared to use and then project from already installed sound systems or inexpensively installable sound systems almost the anti-noise for whatever you're trying to attack. Thank you. Hi, this is a really cool idea. Uh, what about the big issue where some low frequency sounds have extremely long wavelengths? Yes. And how do you deal with that since in space you're in, in a smaller area and the waves in a much bigger area? Yes, that's what I've noticed, specifically with the 80 hertz trials and sounds lower than that in infrasonic frequencies. And almost where you'd almost feel it more than you'd hear it. And things like that. So I was thinking that in possible further research, if with more precise calculation, you wouldn't have to wait the entire phase of a waveform. You'd only have to wait a specific percentage or a hundred and whatever percentage of that waveform, which would still be almost barely imperceptible to the human because it would go so quickly. It would be almost, it would be nanoseconds. But you would be able to kind of, you would be able to establish an intelligent network that doesn't need the entire period, but over time can establish low infrasonic frequencies. So what did you learn from collaborating with your 3M mentor? My 3M mentor, Mr. M. Slander, I just, I would, this would never have been possible without him because he kind of helped me transition a scientific concept into an idea, like 3M does, science applied to life, into an idea and a scalable, possible product that could be used practically. And he also connected me to several other connections specifically, namely Dr. Fackler, who works with 3M but doesn't necessarily work here in Minneapolis but he is an acoustical expert, an expert in like the geometry of concert halls or acoustical spaces. And he was able to give me this incredibly valuable insight on how to integrate this with passive noise reduction systems for incredibly in ultrasonic frequencies and to how those would interact in a room that's not just a square, as none rooms really are. So tell me a little bit about the, the biggest successes you've had in, in your research and design process. So I really kind of got started and I didn't have any issues necessarily because I did a lot of virtual testing preliminary that I did not include, but the phys actual physical testing, I had problems with securing a testing location because it was still in a very basic phase in the very first year. It was still in a basic way where it couldn't accommodate for anything else and I needed to occlude untestable sounds, and that would really would have been my larger problem through getting original accurate testing the first time to build an idea on. Zach, would you uh, uh, remind us of how you used uh, 3M products in your design? Oh, yes. So the 3M products helped with establishing the scientific environment and building it. So establishing with the 3M panels, which is really good, 3M sound panels are really, really good at blocking out unneeded frequencies that wouldn't be part of the experiment, 
the spray adhesives and commands were the only way that I was really able to get everything in a self-contained unit practically. And then the three and three M pelt or headset was really useful in determining and comparing my data with that of a passive, just noise muffling headset. Thank you. How do you feel? Relieved. <laughs> you did an awesome job. I don't know if anybody caught this, but when you were done presenting, your presentation was great. Like you turned to the judges and kind of stepped forward and like bring it on. They were they had their heads down. <laughs> I'm like, whoo. I'm sorry. No, no, it was very good. It's very good. So you did a wonderful job. Thank you. Um, one more round of applause. You can head on out this way. Sure. Thank you, Jack. All right. So uh, it's this time of the show where I always get.